Today I'm going to look at a new gimbal that's just come out by Feutech and it's the AK2000C. I've been filming with gimbals for years, all from when Vincent Laferre first shot that intro with the Freefly Movi, I think it was, right through to the present day. I remember watching that first video thinking, this is where it's going and this is where the technology needs to be to stabilize these cameras because they're so sensitive to movement. I've also built my own gimbal. I've used small handheld gimbals, big gimbals and absolutely massive gimbals. And they're great tools for stabilizing your shots and getting really usable footage. I've also had my gimbal for about four years now and it's getting a little bit worn. So when Feutech sent me this one to try out, I was intrigued. Now Feutech have been producing gimbals for a while now and they have some really good units on the market already. I've used their wearable gimbal and that's fantastic for mountain biking and snowboarding right out of the box. Although that one is only for action sports, whereas the one I'm looking at today is for bigger mirrorless and DSLR cameras. However, whether it's a small gimbal or a big gimbal, they all follow the same principles. So I've been able to try out the AK2000C with my A7 III and also my A6600, and it works well with both. They do have the AK2000 and the AK2000S, and they seem to be improving it with every new model they bring out. Here's the box, and even though they wanted an unboxing video, I hate unboxing videos, so Here's the box, and here's what's in the box, and here's what's in the box without the foam. You get the gimbal, a little tripod stand, a load of cables so you can connect whichever cameras you have to it, a lens support, and a quick release plate. The great thing with this gimbal is that it comes with the Arca Swiss mounting plate already built into it. So if you use L brackets like I do, this is perfect as I don't have to add any different mounting plates to the bottom of my camera before using the gimbal. And this is the one thing I don't like with other gimbals or older gimbals as well. They tend to use their own quick release plates or the big old Manfrotto ones. I think it's the 501 plates. Times are changing and cameras and gimbals and quick release plates are all getting smaller. So this is great to know that I can utilize the Arca Swiss plate built into the L bracket that I have on every single one of my cameras. And this is a quick tip as well. If you do shoot a lot of video, keep all of your quick release plates the same. I have a load of these Arca Swiss mounting plates and have them on everything. So I can quickly transfer my camera from my gimbal to my tripod, to an overhead boom, to absolutely anything that I'm using. So back to the gimbal. It has a 2.2 kilo payload. It weighs just over one kilo at 1,078 grams. It has a battery life of around about seven hours, which is inbuilt. And I couldn't get the thing to run out. I was filming for ages on it and it just kept going. If you were on a super long shoot and it ran over, that's when you might find this a problem. However, if you have a battery pack with enough power, you can charge it whilst using it. The one I had didn't work because it didn't have enough power, but when I plugged it into the mains, it did charge whilst being on. So I could actually use the gimbal with it plugged in. So like I said, if you've got a big enough and a powerful enough battery pack, that'll power it okay. Like with all gimbals nowadays, it comes with locking switches on each of the axes. So this is good for having it in your bag when you don't want it loose, and also when you're balancing the gimbal. You can lock two of the three axes off and just work on one, balancing it through that one axis. And then lock that one and then change it to the next one and so on and so forth until the gimbal is fully balanced. Although coming from a gimbal without any locks at all, there have been a few times where I've forgotten about them and I've left them locked and I've turned the gimbal on and it's kind of struggled and rattled around a little bit and then I've realized what I've done. So if you are coming from a much older gimbal, this is something to be aware of. It also comes with a pretty big set of tripod legs. They're not huge, but they do spread out quite a lot. And it's another tool that really helps when balancing it. So you can just put it on a flat surface, keep it there, and it won't go anywhere and it won't tip over either. And as well as being a mini tripod, when you fold the legs down, it's a place to put your second hand. As for functions, it has loads of them. So this is what it can do. First of all, we have the usual suspects. We've got pan only, pan and tilt, and full lock. 
It also has a fully moving mode where all axes are enabled. So you can do some really funky looking shots with this. Then we have the panning and or tilting time-lapse function where you set your start point, set your end point, set the time that you want to shoot the time-lapse over and then shoot the sequence. It can also shoot hyperlapses if your hands are steady enough and you can walk in a relatively straight line. Then there's the inception mode, which I thought was a bit of a gimmick to start with, but it's actually a lot of fun and it's actually a really cool feature. And then there's the selfie mode. So if you're a vlogger, this would definitely work with a wide angle lens. To access all of these modes, it has a little touchscreen on the handle, which is really good as there is no memorizing how many times you have to click a button to get to a certain mode. I did find that I inadvertently touched a different setting on this a couple of times when I was going into the inverted mode, but you can lock this screen off with a touch of the power button. When the screen is unlocked with a quick swipe to the left, this will take you to the inception mode, time-lapse and selfie mode. And another swipe left, you have your payload setting, and this is where you can set your motor strengths for the size of camera you have. I just press auto in this function and it works really well. Then you can choose how fast or slow the gimbal will move with shooting mode. In this, there's a smooth mode, default mode, action mode and customize. These are quite self-explanatory and if the defaults don't fit your taste, there's always the customize option where you can change follow speed and the dead zone. So depending on what you're shooting, you can set this to suit. Next we have the joystick settings where you can choose whether to reverse the motion up or down and then the speed of the joystick as well. I don't worry too much about this because I prefer to do all of my pans and tilts with the movement of the gimbal itself and in that slow mode it works really well. And like with any gadget nowadays you have the settings tab and in here you can set the language and calibrate the gimbal. I found that with all gimbals you do need to calibrate them from time to time. So if yours starts to drift when you're in the full lock mode, get it perfectly balanced and then calibrate it through this menu option. Then if that wasn't enough, you can connect the camera up with a cable to be able to start and stop recording with the button on the front and also to take photos. And also if you connect up with the app, this will then let you control the settings via the gimbal as well. So ISO, exposure compensation and white balance all by swiping right. Now I shoot all of my videos in manual mode, so this isn't something I really use, but it might come in handy depending on how you shoot. Now this touch menu is actually really good because it means you can access all of the advanced features without having to use the app. So say if you're out on a shoot and your phone is running out of power, it doesn't matter because in that little swipe screen, you have all of the functions that you need. So I've been out shooting for the last couple of weeks and I've got quite a bit of footage from this gimbal. Here's the gimbal on a wide shot. This is with a 17 millimeter lens and I'm walking at a steady pace, but I'm trying not to bob up and down too much. I'm doing that kind of gimbal walk. Here it is with a 35 millimeter, which I really like using on a gimbal as you can get loads of separation, especially with a faster 35 millimeter. And the lens for the Sony is absolutely tiny, so it makes the whole system not too heavy at all. Then this is on the 85 millimeter. This is a hard shot to pull off, and after a few tries at it, I think I got one okay. But you'll find that the longer you go with focal length, the harder it is to get a good, steady, stable shot. And just for fun, here's the 85 millimeter in crop mode on the a7 III. You can see that even the slightest movement shows up in the shot. This is a really hard test for the gimbal and it did surprisingly well. However, for most people, they'll be shooting with a wide angle lens most of the time on a gimbal. You may go slightly longer on the focal length, but I don't think I go much past 55. Every now and then I will shoot one at 85 and it's really good to see that this gimbal does handle it well. As for the app, you can control it as you would in most apps. It can be used as a joystick and you can set a few of the other functions in the gimbal settings tab. It is an intuitive app and after a few uses, it all becomes pretty easy to navigate. Although like I've already said, you don't really need the app and I found that I was using it less and less. Now it does have a few other functions as well. If you double tap on the power button, it puts it into a standby mode and this means it'll turn on a lot quicker but it means you're saving power. So this is one thing that you can do if you are on a really long shoot. The trigger button can be customized and it's multifunctional. 
Triple tap turns the camera around to selfie mode, and if you pull and hold the trigger, you can lock it into a certain mode. Now, after I said all of that about the app, you do need the app if you want to change the function of the trigger. I'll tend to have it in lock all axes, because then what I can do is film in the pan and tilt mode, and then if I like a frame, I can lock it very quickly with that trigger. It has three one quarter 20 threads for monitors, extra handles, microphones, or anything you want to mount to it. Two are on the handle and one is on the top next to the camera. Now this would be a place I'd probably put a microphone or a wireless transmitter. When you compare it to the last model released by Feutech, the AK2000S, there is no big wheel on the side, the handle isn't included, but I'm sure you could probably buy one as an accessory. And it has a similar weight and a similar payload capacity at 2.2 kilos. So there are an absolute ton of settings in this gimbal, and you're probably wondering how much all of this is going to cost. And it's not that much at all. I was really surprised at how cheap this was. The Zion Weeble S is currently at $399. The DJI Ronin SC is currently at $279, but the Feutech AK2000C comes in at $229. So they are getting really competitive with the pricing, which is great for us budget filmmakers and videographers. So what do I think? It is a great gimbal for most mirrorless cameras and DSLRs, and it'll handle all that I can throw at it. I was walking around the city the other day for hours in the hot sun of Bangkok, and it did just fine. It's well built and doesn't feel like it would break too easily. Even when I change the lenses over and forget to rebalance it with that different weight distribution, it still holds the camera really steady. So the motors have plenty of power. And for the price point that it's at, it's fantastic value for money at $229 for a fully working DSLR and mirrorless gimbal of this size and with this many features. Now, if you want to see more, click on this video next. And for some photography tutorials, click down here. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe for weekly videos, tutorials, and reviews in photography and videography. I'll see you next time.